This procedure begins with transfecting 293 T cells with lentivirus plasmid and viral packaging vectors. The viral supernatant is harvested after at least a 48-hour incubation period. The supernatant is filtered to be concentrated with an ultracentrifuge. After ultracentrifugation, the viral pellet is resuspended with PBS. To obtain virus titer, first dilute concentrated virus in complete media. Then perform serial dilution to infect cells with lentivirus. Hi, I'm Xiaoyin Wong from the Laboratory of Michael McManus at the Diabetes Center in the University of California, San Francisco. I'm Michael McManus. Today, we'll show you a procedure for the production of lentiviruses. We use this procedure in the laboratory to make lentiviruses for RNA interference. So let's get started. To begin this protocol, prepare the DNA with which to transfect the 293T cells. First, Dilute Fujin-6 transfection reagent in a 1.5 milliliter tube by mixing 30 microliters Fujin-6 with 600 microliters serum-free medium. Be careful to not let Fujin touch the side of the tube as you deliver it into the medium. Incubate at room temperature for 5 minutes. Next, in the cap of the tube, mix 4 micrograms lentiviral plasmid with 1.33 micrograms each, third-generation viral packaging vectors. The lentiviral plasmid contains the DNA the virus will insert into the genome of every cell it infects, while the packaging vectors contain genes for all the other proteins required to make a lentivirus. Close the lid and mix by inverting the tube a few times. Incubate the DNA and transfection reagent for 15 to 20 minutes at room temperature. Now it is time to transfect 293 cells with the DNA you have prepared. Use cells that you have plated 24 hours in advance and that have reached 50 to 70 percent confluency. In the tissue culture hood, Pipette all of the prepared DNA onto the 293 plate. Mix gently by tilting the plate back and forth. Return the cells to the incubator and allow viral production to continue for 48 to 96 hours before harvest. During incubation, the 293 cells produce lentiviruses whose genomes contain an RNA copy of your DNA of interest. Now it is time to collect the virus. Take your cells out of the incubator. Have ready in the tissue culture hood a 0.45 micron syringe filter, a disposable 10 milliliter syringe, and an ultra clear Beckman centrifuge tube. Use the disposable syringe to remove the supernatant, which now contains the virus. Attach a 0.45 micron syringe filter to the tip and filter the virus into an ultra clear Beckman centrifuge tube. The filter allows only viruses and not cells to pass through. Before discarding, incubate all virus-producing cells, culture plates, syringes, and filters in 10% bleach for 45 minutes. Now that you have collected and filtered the virus, it is time to concentrate the virus by ultracentrifugation. First, use serum-free DMEM to balance all virus-containing tubes to within 0.2 grams of each other.
Next, load the balanced centrifuge tubes into SW41TI or SW28 rotor buckets. Seal the rotor buckets shut and hook them onto the rotor. Then place the rotor inside the ultra centrifuge. Spin the virus for about 90 minutes at 4 degrees Celsius at 25,000 RPM in an SW41 TI rotor or 24,000 RPM in an SW28 rotor. After centrifugation, return to the tissue culture hood and invert the tube to pour the supernatant into a container containing 10% bleach. Use a Kim wipe to absorb excess liquid around the pellet and invert the tube in a convenient rack for no more than five minutes until you are ready to resuspend the pellet. To resuspend the viral pellet, use a filter tip to add 100 microliters of sterile pre-filtered PBS to your tube. Then pipette up and down about 20 times. Leave the virus at 4 degrees overnight to complete resuspension. You can store viral preps at 4 degrees for about one week and at minus 80 degrees for up to one year. Remember to treat all empty tubes with 10% bleach before discarding. If you intend to use the viral prep for longer than the one week it will keep in the fridge, make minimal aliquots of 5 to 20 microliters for future experiments and one aliquot of 3 to 5 microliters for the titration. Freeze and store the aliquots at approximately minus 80. The next step is to determine the viral titer. If you have included a fluorescent reporter gene in your lentiviral plasmid, infected cells will fluoresce and you can determine the viral titer using flow cytometry. To begin, dilute 3 microliters of concentrated virus into 1.5 milliliters of complete medium. In wells 1 to 6 in a single row of a 96 well plate, perform the following serial dilutions. To all 6 wells add 100 microliters of complete DMEM. To the first well, add 100 microliters of medium with no virus. This is your unstained control. To the second well, add 100 microliters of the diluted virus. To the third well, add 100 microliters of the mix from the second well. To the fourth well, add 100 microliters from the third well. To the fifth well, add 100 microliters from the fourth well. And to the sixth well, add 100 microliters from the fifth well. Finally, take 100 microliters out of the 6th well and discard in bleach. Bring the total volume in all of the wells to 200 microliters with DMEM. With each dilution, the viral concentration decreases by half. Note that these are only suggested dilutions, which should work well for titering most concentrated viruses. If your virus is low in titer or unconcentrated, you may need to adjust your dilutions. Treat any unused, diluted virus with 10% bleach for 45 minutes before discarding into a biohazard waste container. Add about 15,000 healthy, actively dividing 293 T cells to each of the six wells. You can use a single 96 well plate to titer 16 viral preps. Top off wells to 200 microliters. Return cells to the incubator and allow infection to proceed for at least 48 hours. After the incubation, analyze the cell's fluorescence using a flow cytometer. You can use the percentage of fluorescent cells per well to determine the titer 
or number of infectious viral particles per milliliter of virus added. Calculate the number of infectious units per milliliter with the following formula. When interpreting flow cytometer results, note that one can only achieve accurate titer calculations when infected cells have received no more than one viral integration per cell. In order to ensure that this is the case, use cells with less than 15% infection rate for calculations. Cells with higher infection rates will likely have received multiple viral integrants per cell. The dilution suggested in step 2 should yield several samples within this range of infection. Ideally, use several samples to generate a titration plot from which you can calculate the final titer. The calculated formula from the fitted linear line can be used to calculate the viral titer, but you can calculate titer using a single sample if necessary. One can expect titer of 1 times 10 to the 7th transducing units per milliliter for unconcentrated virus and 1 times 10 to the 8th transducing units per milliliter for concentrated virus. We've just shown you how to produce lentiviruses. When doing this procedure, it's important to adhere to all biosafety regulations and dispose of waste properly. So that's it. Thanks for watching and good luck with your experiments.